Good afternoon, builders. This is Terry with the Afforda Plane. Terry Adair, Houston, Texas, building the Afforda Plane. And I'm just going to give you guys a brief update here. Uh, we've had some questions and uh, a few answers. Here is the wing we covered before with that dynamic hamber. Trust me, guys, this will fly just fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. That wing's done. Top, bottom, final stretch. Brackets are on. And it's ready to go. Um, I will probably have to do a little bit of a fix. I'm going to see how it goes. I don't know if this shows up on camera, but there's a couple spots right here where these bolts are touching the fabric. Now, they are taped up. Uh, with about two to three layers of anti-chafing tape, but I just don't like that. Um, on the second wing, I've elected, as much as I hated to, grinding those heads off, or those uh, threads off, and making them file down flat. And hopefully we'll have no clearance issues with the second wing. Worse, oh! Tripped on a jack stand. Worst case scenario, they poke a hole in it. And if they do that, then I just cut it out and I'll shear that head off and I'll put a patch on them. But it's not certified aviation. So I'm going to do what I got to do. There's one right there too. They uh, Hopefully they hold up, but if not, we'll fix them. We won't have to worry about it on the second wing. Second wing is on the sawhorse. And we have the bottom fabric laid out. We're going to be mixing up a little bit of uh, poly tack in a little bit. And you guys have been asking me, uh, well, not all you guys, but a couple people have been asking, what are we using? We are using the poly fabric. It's, on, uh, it's a 1.9 ounce, I believe, poly fabric. And uh, it works real, real easy. I like it. Um, how many yards? I think I posted approximately 36 yards for the wing. Uh, now that did not include the tail. That's just the wings. Um, here or there, you know, that's, you want to, you want to figure you're going to need about 26, 27 feet, uh, by six foot, you know, to cover this and the aileron. So, um, you know, hey. I know you guys got questions, but hey, it's just math, folks. If you got plans, I think he tells you how much fabric to order. But if not, it's just a quick math problem. Figure out how many square feet you got, divide that by nine, and that should give you the square yards. But anyway, I believe the wings are 36 square yards. The uh, glue I'm using, a little bit different than what uh, Robert's using. Robert's using the Stewart system. Uh, which is a very good system. I'm using the Polytac, uh, which is also another very good system. Uh, I think the main difference is this here puts off uh, some fumes, kind of like, um, oh, paint thinner. And the uh, Stewart systems does not. But they do go on very similar. Uh, you can still iron this once it's dry, just like you can the Stewart. Um, but you do not have to put it on and wait very long for it to dry. You can uh, brush it on and start laying your fabric because, uh, well, I don't know about other places, but here it begins to tack up uh, quite quickly. And uh, same system we used on the tail surfaces of this airplane, and they've been covered now for well over two years. The cats have been bouncing on them. They even caught fire one time when we were out here messing around with some nitro fuel and model airplanes. And uh, they held up great. So uh, nothing's come loose. I believe it'll be just fine. Now, one of the things that I had posted about the uh, landing gear wires, we had a lot of talk about that. A lot of discussion in the Afforda Plane group and um, all kinds of different ideas uh, going back and forth. I did find out 
the uh, tin sleeves is definitely what we needed to use. And uh, I learned something new called the uh, Molly Hogan loop, which I really like. I tried it uh, several times, and it's very strong. Um, I tested it to destruction, as a matter of fact, and it turned out to be even stronger than these tin um, sleeves. But I will say this, the tin sleeves definitely held up on their own compared to the copper sleeves. Um, I did a little rudimentary test. We uh, basically took a couple of these uh, cables off of the landing gear that had busted and we did a copper sleeve test to destruction and I could pull it out and break it with my bare hands. Just uh, basically what I did is I hooked it on the tail hitch of my truck and I jerked on it, had a nice big hand hold, used one of these big mother straps right here to hook on it and that big hook and I just jerked it. Only took a couple jerks and the copper sleeves broke. So I did another test. I did a, a test with these uh, tin sleeves right here. Could not break those by hand. Um, or or couldn't, couldn't cause them to fail. Uh, ultimately, I ended up having to tie a chain on it. Uh, about 10 foot long. And whip that sucker about a dozen times. It did finally break loose. But um, what I was really impressed about, the Molly Hogan loop that I put in and tested that one. And I didn't even crimp it. All I did was secure it with electrical tape. It never broke, folks. Never broke. Um, definitely glad to learn that and we'll use it. I did not use it here only for one reason. And that reason is... On my particular airplane, I need these cables to be precisely 29 and a half inches long. And getting something precisely woven when you're a newbie with the Molly Hogan loop, I found it to be quite challenging. And after I burned up through all my scrap wire, I finally decided that I was satisfied with the test of the tin sleeves that I would just go ahead and use those and uh, however I did double them up and um, these guys are nice and tight now and uh, airplane is nice and solid uh, we've been bouncing on it had the kids playing on it and uh, so far no failures and uh, so we look forward to those doing a good job all right what else did we do we cleaned our workspace Spent the better part of the morning cleaning. I know it looks like it's not clean, but really we just got a bunch of tools out where we were doing some cabling and whatnot, and we got our bolts out. These are our AN4 bolts store there, AN3 bolts here, and yeah, I know I have a lot more than I really needed, but I got a little ambitious when I started ordering things a few years back. So we got our parts cart organized there we go and some of our tools organized and put away that we hadn't been using I put them back in the big toolbox but anyway we're getting getting close folks we're getting very excited over here hopefully we'll be uh, taking this to the airport soon and running her down the runway a um, couple folks over in India I believe on the YouTube channel um, wanting me to get some close-up shots for you of the control system. Now, I'm going to assume you're building an airplane just like this and you have the plans. But I'm not going to go into detail, and I've probably already done this before. That is the control yoke. It's tied into the aileron belt crank. And the plans show all of this stuff, guys. Cables come up. Go through the pulleys. Another bell crank. A couple push rods go to the ailerons. A 
back to the yoke a couple of brackets you had to drill an extra hole here this here it twists okay that's why we do that that's a straight tube comes over here to the bell crank support elevator support and then goes all the way back there to the control horn on the elevator so I hope hope that gives you what you wanted there over in India um, not usually in the habit of taking requests but since I'm here there you go alright guys I'm out of here I need to uh, go order a pizza it's pizza night here at the Adair house and we're gonna have some pizza and some root beer and once it cools off I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna start attaching this fabric to the bottom of the wing alright guys thank you please like and subscribe to the videos until next time we're out of here